Uh, I'm going to go through some of the basic theory and concept about uh, depth mapping and shadow mapping. For the shadow map, we we need to know how far away an object is from the light. So we do this by making a depth map, as I said, from the light to the object. And then we go to the eye position or wherever you we view from and we then project where the shadow should be if any shadow should be there All right and here we have the uh, equation for um, doing projected texturing which is the, the method you use to project the texture the, 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 the depth map down onto the plane um, and this um, equation takes in um, the prediction matrix and and the view matrix from the light and in this case it it, it, it is the light that from like the, the, the light position from where we generate the, the depth map as well, so it's, so it's this light. Um, and then we multiply those with a, a, a scale matrix that sets the, this number between um, um, zero and one, so we, which we use to figure out if an object is, is in shadow or not. And then we multiply this with the modeling matrix and um, with position matrix of the, of the plane. And then we can correctly project the the, the, the the depth map down onto the plane, and then and get shadows in the correct spot places. Now we'll show how we actually did this in Unity. So, as you can see up here, we have a camera and the light source actually stacked on top of each other. The point light gives us the light in the scene, so we can see anything actually. But the way that we generate the matrices that we need uh, in Unity is that we actually take them from a camera. And that's also the way we calculate the depth map. The depth map can be seen in the back here where it, the shadows actually will be. And if I to start the program, you can also see that this depth map changes. So the camera is actually recording where there should be shadows. And that is then projected down onto this plane. So we this is actually just a plane that have a render texture which was generated by this camera and you do that simply by having Unity Pro first of all creating a, a render texture and then applying it to the target texture there's not much in that you just need Unity Pro then for the save sake of it we only want to render shadows on certain objects so we made a calling mask called cubes in this case and the the camera will only look at cubes as you can see here in the camera preview it only looks at what hath the the tag cubes and we then apply uh, this script to it which instead of uh, showing colors on the Render texture, we render it in a, a grayscale, but we'll get more into that in a moment. And the plane, which is where we project the shadows on, uh, we have this script, which again, we'll get into the scripts the third, uh, later, but this is actually, that script is used to send in the matrices that we need uh, to calculate in the shader and then we apply uh, the, the shadow map here uh, so the shadows get onto the plane real time um, and in order to um, render the the render texture correctly so we so we get it as a depth map we do two things first we have the first we have, first we have the script and then we have a shader applied to, to, to the cam to, to the camera here, um, inside this inside the script as a material, which then has 
this shader on it. Um, and I will go in, in, into those two now. Um, and here we have the script itself. It's very simple. It just tells the camera to, to, to render in an in, in, in depth texture mode depth so it we get it out as a depth texture and then it will be used this function graphics graphics split to 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 continually update the the, 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 the render texture all right and inside the, the shader here we uh, use a couple of uh, built-in uh, features in unity uh, for example this one to get to get the depth texture um, and then we get the uh, the, the position in world space also using a, a built-in fu built function in the vertex shader and get the um, screen position uh, and I'm going to upload those to, to the fragment shader so we down here can find the depth value um, and, and put that as, as the value between um, between 0 and 1 um, but, but by looking at the depth texture and our and our position um, and then um, and then we basically just um, put put this as as um, put this de depth value as our RGB value, so it just becomes grayscale. Um, and then we just out out output this as the output of the shader. So this leaves us with the plane, and this is where we actually project the shadow on. And we have uh, the shadow mapping shader on the plane, and we have the script. And I'll start with the script. So again, we have a pretty simple script. We have a camera, which is the camera used also for the depth mapping. And then we actually just sent two of its matrices from the camera into the shader. And that is the light view matrix and the light projection matrix, which we needed for the calculation we showed you in the beginning. So the shadow mapping shader. Um, we only really use two properties. One is for the color of, of the plane, and the other is the shadow map, so the render texture that we need. Um, the first part of the code, there's really not much to say. It's a simple diffuse shader. Uh, you can look at it if you want, but, uh, but this is pretty much uh, all you need for the diffuse. So I'm actually just going to cover what uh, is about the the shadow mapping. So if you look closely here, you can see that this is actually the calculation that we showed you, but done in the shader. So first, we uh, we need to to get uh, the texture from uh, where we need the models and it's vertex so we make a float 4 called model for texture uh, then our constant matrix is the scale and bias so we know that it that the value will be, will be within 0 and 1 we then make a texture matrix where we multiply matrices first the constant matrix with the light projection matrix that we just got from our camera. And when we have this multiplied, we multiply it with the value we get from in here with the live view matrix. Uh, and down here we have the, the an output for the, the text coordinate pro projection, which is the coordinates where we need shadows on the plane. And we get them by taking the texture matrix that we just calculated and the model for texture that we just calculated. And then in the fragment shader, we um, create a new float uh, called shadow coefficient, and we uh, then figure out with this if 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 there should be a shadow knot on this particular fragment. To do this, we 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 project the with the shadow map, and take the text co coordinate, coordinate prediction that we calculated in the vertex shader and then we and then we have a value that is either one or zero that is between one or zero to to then know if a value should be um, uh, in shadow or not in shadow and then we uh, for this version of the shader we just uh, say that it if it, 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 
that if it is in any kind of 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 just light, light shadow, we just made completely black. Um, and if it's not not shadow, we we just we just make make the render texture um, the, or the, the the shadow completely white. Um, and we do this uh, because the depth map, as you can see here, actually is reverse of how of, of how shadows look because the closer objects are to the camera, the darker they get. But in, but but this would mean that the, that the shadow would then be very light close to the object and dark yeah, far far away from the object. So therefore, we just make the object the, the shadow complete completely black. Uh, now we are done with the the code and we'll look into a bit state of the art and in before we could do depth mapping and shadow mapping like we did uh, we had stencil and volume and how this worked were by rendering in complete shadows no light at all then you created the masks using depth information in your scene and then you're actually render the entire scene again, fully lit this time, where you then use the information from the mask to see where shadows should be displayed in your scene. And now shadow mapping is, um, is the state of the art um, um, in the same, using the same method we did, using the depth, using the depth buffer, where you create the depth map from the light's point of view. Um, a good, a good um, a current example of this is the Unreal Engine, which cr which cre creates these very soft shadows in real time by using dynamic uh, cascade shadow mapping. Some of the improvements we could have done in our shader were implementing cascade shadowing, just like Unreal have. Uh, and this works by taking the view frustrum and dividing it into several parts and having more details and better shadowing the closer to the 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 viewport or the camera wherever you're viewing from so it actually renders better shadows the closer you are to them another thing we could have done was um, was creating more soft shadows because right now our shadows are extremely hard um, and uh, you could have done this either through, through um, anti-aliasing um, pcf or or, or Poisson sampling, which are some of the current um, me methods for creating more soft shadows. Um, and finally, we, we, we also uh, uh, need uh, um, compatibility for, for having multiple light sources, because right now our shader only works with one light source. Um, 